Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Paul Beckwith, and what I want to discuss in this video is a great tool uh, called Climate Trace, and it allows you to really get a handle on emission sources around the world. Where are they? Which cities are worst? You know, which industrial areas are putting out the most pollution, the most CO2, the most methane, um, particulate matter, specifically PM 2.5 particles, which are very harmful when they, because they're so small, 2.5 micron and smaller diameter. And then if they get deep inside the uh, lungs and the alveoli where the oxygen is exchanged um, with the blood, uh, they can cause all kinds of problems, all kinds of health problems and mortalities are associated with PM 2.5 particles. So, so Climate Trace is a very useful software tool that was developed just prior to COP25, COP26, I think, in, in Glasgow, Scotland in 2021. So I guess, you know, a lot of the code was written during the uh, pandemic years. So let's have a quick look at Climate Trace and uh, see what it's all about. I remember when I attended the COP cl uh, climate conference, um, I attended a session that Al, Go Al Gore was speaking about climate trace, you know, what, it, what it's all about and what it is. And I think um, Time Magazine ranked it in 2021 in the top 100 inventions of that year. So I don't know if that means it was 99 or, you know, probably it was close to 100 because you know, if it was in the top 50, they would have said that, not top 100, right? So top 100 probably means it was near, you know, in the in the upper 90s, I would guess. I haven't checked that. So climatetrace.org, we're here. But before I get into details on what it is, and there's different, you can track global emissions. Um, you can look at the pollution pr plumes and you can estimate, you know, what sort of emissions reduction you would get say going to wind and solar globally and electric cars, all the different things. And it's ranked from the high, the biggest impact effects to the smallest. So a little bit more about Climate Trace. So Trace stands for tracking real time, tracking real time atmospheric carbon emissions. So it's an independent group. It monitors and publishes greenhouse gas emissions basically. It was launched in 2021 before COP26. It improves the, the monitoring, reporting, and verification, MRV for short, of both carbon dioxide and methane. So they monitor sources like coal mines, power station, smokestacks worldwide. They use satellite data. They don't own the satellites. They just collect the satellite data. And they're using more and more artificial intelligence to analyze the data. So it's a non-profit. Time Magazine named it as one of the 100 best inventions of 2020. Their emissions map is the largest global inventory and interactive map of greenhouse gas emission sources. And <coughs> it may actually influence the politics of climate change because it can reduce disputes on monitoring, reporting and verification. It can lead to more ambitious climate pledges. You know, if we know the worst areas for the emissions, you know, that should be the first step in then we're trying to reduce those emissions. Um, and, you know, people, different um, countries submit annual reports um, to the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. <laughs> um, and this this there's new data released monthly two months after the emissions um on this website so so they do all they use satellite imagery the coalition has many members nonprofits um there's some companies um they've got they mention al gore he's been a big factor in in this uh, particular um software in climate trace okay so let's have a look at some of the data so there's the three main areas. So I just look at those in order here. So this is the um, this is the first one. If you click on 
track global emissions. This is what you get here. And it tells you 60.19 billion tons of CO2 equivalent. That's based on a 100-year time scale. They've got almost 2.8 million sources. And they give you a curve. Um, and they tell you the, sec the, the regions, all emissions, um, the ra they, they rank the different emitters. So there's Russia, West Siberia, Iran, um, Canada, what, this is the Alberta oil sands, okay? Ranked third in the world as, as the largest single emitter. 166.85 million megatons CO2 equivalent on a 100-year time scale. There's a, another Russian site, Saudi Arabia, and so on. So you can go down the list and you can see where, like there's the Permian oil in, you know, and then you can click on each of these to get additional information and they go right down the list from largest to smallest emitters. Um, okay, so we'll go back. Um, actually, it opened up a new, uh, yeah, let's go and what okay let's close that i guess yeah okay okay so so there's information here on the legend you can look at specific cities you know you can there's the different colors for different types of emissions from different sources and you can move around on this map um and you can zero in on different areas and you can see by the color coding and so on, where, where the largest emissions are. So if I wanted to come up here to closer to my neck of the woods, for example, we can scroll up and we can look at Ottawa here. So there are, there's not a lot of point sources. This one here kind of sticks out. This is the airport, the Ottawa McDonald Carchet International Airport. 247.12 kilotons of CO2 equivalent. That's a hundred year, um, on 100, over 100 years, CO2 equivalent, in 20, and this is in 2024, and you can see the emissions here, the monthly emissions that I scroll by each month, and then the yearly emissions and so on. Um, and, you know, we can go back to look at, uh, say, Toronto, you know, compare, let's look at Toronto. Well, what do we have? We've got the airport here, Lester B. Pearson. Uh, what do we have here? I don't know what, uh, something glitched. Anyway, you get the, the idea, right? You can do, what is this? Is this a nuclear power? Darlington, this is a nuclear power plant here, right? And uh, you can go down. This is, what is this? Toronto board plant. There's Hamilton. The Fasco steel plant, right? You can go around... Um, and you can look at your neck of the woods and see where the emissions are coming from, where the CO2 equivalent, so CO2, methane, other greenhouse gases, where they're coming from. So it's a very, very useful, um, very, very useful tool. And it, you know, it's very data intensive. I mean, there's loads and loads of data. So, you know, you can go to your particular country Look at this uh, when you look at the um, emissions here from China. So China is huge, but it's over in this part. It's heavily industrialized over in this part. There's not much over here, um, right? So you can look at, uh, you know, go over to Europe here. You know, you can see easily compare Northern Hemisphere to Southern Hemisphere emissions. Not too many uh, greenhouse gas emissions from Antarctica. We've got New Zealand and Australia. So, you know, it's mostly the, around the coast of Australia. This is probably an offshore oil rig or something, oil field, Li liquefied natural gas, oil and gas production offshore, right? So it's very detailed. It's hard to hide emissions from, from climate trace. So it's a very useful tool. Um, and if you go and click on the pollution plumes, you can actually see uh, the air pollution plume. So I'm looking at um, in North America here, you know, you can back right off and look at the overall planet, different plumes. You know, so let's go to something in China, for example. Uh, and a bit of lag 
here on my computer. Scrolling in to China. Let's go down to one particular area here. Uh, and then as you get closer and closer, you can see where the plumes are coming from. There we go. So all the pollution being emitted. So this is uh, tells you this source, the Shundei Daisheng Power Station, 116.7 tons. Um, or or this, these are plumes, sorry, these are plumes of uh, PM 2.5. The, the particulate matter 2.5, so any mi particles two and a half microns in diameter or lower. Um, and uh, you can get more information here, but you could expand this. Um, so, so PM 2.5 pollution plumes, 21 emitting sources. Um, it tells you how many people, you know, the uh, learn more. Okay, so it's looking at a day's worth of air pollution from 9,500 of the world's super emitters in over 2,500 urban areas. So a plume is a visualization of how PM 2.5 particles emitted from a single fa facility travel through the atmosphere over 24 hours. And they have prevailing conditions versus worse conditions and, and so on. So So you can really get a feel for you know, what's happening. So we'll look, look, looking at this particular, there we go. Okay, so you can really get a feel for, you know, where the particles are coming from. And then the last thing here is um, estimate emissions reductions. Okay, so you can go here and there's an emissions reductions roadmap where as you go higher and higher, it's more and more difficulty so you can get sort of the low changing fruit. It tells you um, what you need to do in order to get that gain, you know, a drop of, of emissions. <clears throat> and then it separate, it gives you the strategies, um, the, the sources in terms of least difficulty, making them the most actionable within this plan. So there's an aluminum plant in Norway, you could save huge amounts of uh, CO2 emissions from Iceland aluminum plant. Look at the, these aluminum plants. They're, they're like the low hanging fruit. Domestic shipping, more aluminum plants. They're right up in the top. So if we were smarter with aluminum plants, we can re greatly reduce emissions, huge amounts. Um, and then there's different strategies. Um, it's showing there's 82 different strategies. They're ranked in terms of the largest effects. So replace activity, with solar generation, um, it uh, you know forty almost half of the gains, the reduction of emissions could just be from solar generation. Go to EVs, that would be a seventeen percent um, reduction. Mitigate forest fire risks, do better on that, eight and a half percent. Okay, so you can go through all of these um, technology retrofits, on-site recovery. Um, this is for methane. Um, stop vent venting methane to the atmosphere, electrification, feed additives in cattle, that's 1.3%. So they go through all of these different methods and they give a, a, you know, an estimate of the target. So all of these things, most of them are lower impact, right? So, the, so really the low hanging fruit, if you like, the things that we could do and make a, a huge impact on reduction, reducing emissions are these things uh, you know, are, are, are these the top 10, say, right, even down here? I mean, there's a big, like, look at that, 48.1%, and then 17%, then 8.5, 8.3, and then we're down to 2.6% 2 and, 2 and under 2% for all the rest, right? So there's very, there, there, you know, let's load some more of these. I'm curious of all the, so it's aluminum, domestic shipping, aluminum, Solid waste disposal, domestic shipping, domestic shipping, aluminum. Look at this. Like it's it's such a there there's specific plants around the world, industries where, you know, it, there's a very limited number of different things that would have the biggest biggest reduction of emissions. It looks like so fascinating that 
aluminum power plants. Uh, we could do way, way better with aluminum power plants and greatly reduce emission. So we're, we've got a gold mine of information here. So Climate Trace is just a superb source for tracking global emissions, looking at particulate matter pollution plumes, PM 2.5, and estimating, you know, how do we do better? How do we reduce emissions? What are the simplest things that we can do <coughs> and get the largest impacts? Um, and you can see all of that stuff here. So I highly recommend that, um, you know, you watch this short bit, assuming you've got this far, you've watched this short video, open all these links, go to Climate Trace and go around and just play, you know, just click on things, look at your area, look at the emissions reductions areas <coughs> just play around with it and have fun and you can learn an awful lot about where where you know we could where the, the the easiest way we could reduce emissions and where the emissions are really bad on the planet and you know you can use this information and go and talk to your politicians for example if you're in a city where emissions are really high <coughs> excuse me from a particular place anyway thank you for listening please go to my website paulbeckwith.net and donate to PayPal to support my research and videos. And I, I think the Climate Trace, it uses up a lot of your computer's resources because it's really slowed down uh, my system. Anyway, thank you for listening and please consider going to my website, paulbeckwith.net and donating to PayPal to support my research and videos. Uh, remember, Christmas is coming up. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening and bye for now.